Hey guys, what's going on? So this is the ultimate shark ion robot rebuild video. So in this video, and I'm gonna I'm gonna warn you fair in advance, this is gonna be a very long detailed video. That's what everyone wants is more detail. So in this video, I'm gonna take our two torture tested robots. This one being a 750N. This one being a 700N. Now these will equate to 850s and you can take these principles that you learned from these and apply them to the Shark IQs. It's gonna be pretty much the same uh, troubleshooting methods and some take apart methods. So in this video, I'm gonna take these apart, fix them. One's got a grinding issue and one's got a basket that keeps popping out and having issues. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. I also have a little piece of carpet uh, from the car that will show you the issues they're having. But like I said in advance, these are gonna be very long videos. I might even have to put them in parts unless I upload them all in one shot. We're gonna tear these things all the way down, rebuild them from the ground up so you can see all the steps involved. All right guys, let's get to it. Okay, like I previously stated, these are our torture test robots. These robots, so I, I get robots that are broke all the time and I was like, what in the world do people do to these things to break them? And let me tell you, y'all do some crazy stuff to these robots. And then there's factory errors. I'm not gonna lie, there's factory errors that come and you have issues. These robots have cleaned um, everything from chocolate milk to carpets to rugs to hardwood. Um, they've sucked up all kinds of gunk. We did this on purpose. We literally had them run out of the water. We, we covered the floor in water just to see how water tolerable they are. We did not clean them out but when they got completely full i mean we really put them through the the ringer and it's my house so i'm not worried about how nasty they are but let's go ahead and power both these these bad boys off let's go ahead and just clean the baskets out i mean that basket's broke so this one's broke i've kicked them i've thrown them We've done everything possible to try to replicate things that could happen. So this one's got a broken, broken uh, dustbin. This one's got a good dustbin. This one's given us a dustbin um, error, so we'll address that. And this one's given us a squeaking issue or a grinding noise um, that's coming from the main brush assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and focus on the first one, which is. This one that has a grinding issue, it's a 750N. Let me dump all this trash out of it. Okay, so there's a couple tools that you're gonna need. Let me go ahead and get all my tools and then we'll come back and take this apart. Okay, so some of the tools that you're gonna need is a long shaft Torx bit set. I just took a screwdriver, wrote the handle off so I can use it on a drill. You're gonna need some Phillips sets and flat heads. That's about it. So, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and let's remove the battery. This is a common question I get asked all the time. How to remove the battery? Super simple. Remove the cover. You're gonna pull the battery out, set it to the side. There's a little clip right there. You literally just press it and pull up. Battery comes out. Set it to the side. Next thing that we're going to do is remove the main brush roller by releasing these two clips right here. Pulling the brush out. And here you can see there's a ton of hair. There's dirt. Dirt's from using them in the garage. I mean, we, we really put these things through a test and they, they still work. They just, one of them likes to shut off and one of them likes to make noise. All right, so we'll take a pick. Go ahead and pull all that hair off the shaft. Just inspect it for any obvious wear. Take a pick or a knife, go ahead and pry up all the hair. Good thing about having kids with long hair and a wife with long hair is there's plenty of hair for it to vacuum up. We don't have any pets. Now, one thing I will tell you right off the rip, if you have animals and it runs over piss, you might as well throw it in the trash because it will, that urine will corrode every circuit on it from the ammonia in the urine. Nothing we can do about that. Most of the time, they're complete trash. Now that you've done that, make sure you get all the hair off, we're gonna replace that little cap. 
<laughs> and no, I do not stock robot parts as much anymore. I, I'm trying to get out of it. Y'all are keeping me in it though. I'm gonna go ahead and just knock this off. Go ahead and take us a flathead. We're gonna do what's called scraping. And that means that we're just gonna take and scrape right here where the dust bin and everything connect. We're just gonna clean that up because that's where dirt likes to hide and then you can't get your, your, your bin to stay in. So we'll do that and then let me get, get a toothbrush for this. Let's take a toothbrush, clean up any of that. Nasty the gunk on there. We'll blow it all out with the air compressor later. All right. Check your wheels for slop. Spinner is missing on one side. Let's remove it. See how it feels. It will feel good. Take your pick or your flathead or your knife. Remove any hair off of the gear assembly. Now we're going to take a torch bit. Go ahead and remove all the screws off the wheels. These are external removable wheels. What I mean by that is you can remove the wheels without taking the body apart. Some 700 and 750 series robots, you have to do it all at once. You have to take the body and everything off. It's a little bit more of a pain, but it can be done. All right. Now that we have those out, we're gonna wiggle the wheel. Wheel's gonna come up. There's gonna be a little cable. Y'all can see that little cable right there. A the little clip. We're just gonna pull the clip. Wheel comes off. There you go. We're gonna inspect it. Sounds good. It's got free play. Now, when it's in, if there's power to it, it won't free spin. The wheels will actually still have a little bit of resistance. Let's go ahead and get all of our screws out. We keep those. I'm going to take our brush, go ahead and brush it down. Then we'll take the air compressor and clean it off later. Okay, wheel number one is removed. Let's go to wheel number two. One, two, three, oops, four, and five. Same thing, a little clip. Just pull the wheel away from you as you hold the clip down. Set the wheel to the side, clean it up, blow it out with the air compressor. Now you're probably wondering, well, do I need to take the wheel out? Yes, you don't have to, but we're doing a complete tear down, so we're gonna take that wheel and just remove it. We're gonna stick for dirt and trash, grime. As you can see, there's some, there's some goodies hanging out in there. Oh, looky here. We found a broken piece. Let's see what that went to. That would probably go to one of these wheels. Let's see. Where would that go? That one looks good. Ah, there it is. It's off of that one. That one's broken right there. Not a big deal. Let's still hold. And actually, if we look... Here's the screw still in it. Not a big deal. Take the screw, put it over there. We just know that one's one less screw. All right. Next, we can take this part out, but we don't need to. It spins free. We're going to remove the bumper. And this is a T8. So we're going to go ahead and remove the 5 screws. This is really important for all you guys that are having uh, robots that are stuck and won't move. Make sure your bumper moves freely. If it sticks, then it's going to think that it's jammed against the wall and it's going to go into error mode. All right, you got those removed. Pull up. Take up. Here we have the array of all the sensors. We have two tabs that are springs. 
So go ahead and while you're in here, blow it off, clean it off with rubbing alcohol, 91% isopropyl alcohol. All right, let's go ahead and split the body. We're gonna remove one here. Some of them don't have this one. Some of them have one in here. This is the part that everybody hates. Let's pick it up really fast. Oh, look at all them goodies in there. There's the rest of that broken one right there. Awesome. Then dump that out, clean that out, blow it out. That's the top case. Now we can flip this bad boy over, let all the screws fall out. And set those over to the side. Or if you're like me, just throw them to your fingers. Um, Go ahead and inspect for any visual water damage. Suction motor, main brush motor, motherboard. Um, this would be left wheel, right wheel. Left, right. These little pieces will fall off and they will drive you crazy because you'll be like, how do I get that on? It's very simple. You just take it and slide it on. Just like that. All right, next you're gonna blow it out. I don't need to. Um, not for this video purpose. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this ring right here. That's very important. I'm going to blow out the suction motor with the air compressor in a minute. All right. Let me go ahead and charge up the air compressor. All right. Here's the fun part. Watch your eyes and your ears. What to do next? Well, it's to remove all these wires to remove the motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the, the motherboard attached to a point, but let's go ahead and start removing wires. So first thing is these rear bumper sensor wires right here and the right side sensor wire. Remove those all over to the side. Next, we're gonna remove these in the middle. This is the wheel wire. That's how you replace that. If it goes bad, we're gonna keep that attached. We're gonna pull it up. Then you have your spinner motor wires. We gotta disconnect those right here because they are under the motherboard. So just go ahead and pull all your wires to the side. Go ahead and pull these out, set those to the side. Same thing with this set right here. Remove this wheel wire just because it's in the way. Go ahead and fish all these wires on both sides out. And disconnect them from the motherboard. You know what? While we're here, let's just go ahead and take the whole motherboard out. It's not hard to replace all this. Y'all see how it's done. All right, so let's take all the wires completely off. Be gentle when you're doing this. I've done it for a long time, so I know how much pressure I can add. I have broken a few of them. All right. Everything's separated, pulled out of the little clips. Now I can go ahead and remove the motherboard. The motherboard is held on with these silver Phillips head screws. Five of them. Make sure I'm not running low on power or memory. We're only going to get to this robot in this video because this video is going to be super long. So stay tuned. I will make the next video after this and I'll upload it as well. Now we're going to slide the motherboard out and over. Go ahead and get your replacement and stick it in. Next, you have spinner motors. These spinner motors, I know for a fact, are good. This one right here and this one. There's three Phillips head screws that hold them in. They just slide right out. So we're not going to remove those. Next is going to be a suction motor. We're going to remove these three silver screws. Phillips head. I got a washer top. So you won't confuse those very easy. Should have got a bigger screwdriver, but this one will work. I don't know about y'all, but it's really hot here in Florida. 
Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing. And my hand's probably in the way. Let me, let me correct that. All right, that should be a little bit better. Okay, next we're gonna take the main brush motor, hold the wires and pull the suction motor out. If your suction motor is bad, there you have it. You just replace that, bang it around, see if there's anything in it. A lot of times Legos get stuck in those. Next, we're gonna remove the main brush motor. One silver screw right here, Phillips head. And another one down here, also Phillips head. This is key, and make sure the square piece is uh, flat and it will remove. This is gonna be the point of our issue, more than likely. So we're gonna split this case open. It's probably gonna be a melted, melted body or a bad belt. That's probably what's causing this noise that we're getting. I'm really shocked that it lasted as long as it did because we've been torture testing these for months. See some stuff falling out, so we'll see. Separate the housing, and there we have it. There's our issue. As you can see, it's shifted. It's melted and pulled away. So this housing is no good. So let's find out if I have another housing to swap out. All right, we're in luck. I have a replacement housing that will work. Go ahead and take these screws out. Pull the motor. Motor still sounds decent. A little slop in it, but as you can see now, the housing is very melted. Go ahead and come to this one. We'll remove the screws on it. Knock stuff over in the process. throw it away it's no good go ahead and line up the holes and screw it down that. Now we can go ahead and take the, the wheel assembly, put the belt in it, lock it in place, take the back plane, put it on, slide it over. I'll test just to make sure it still feels nice and tight. Re replace the three screws. Don't over tighten these, you will warp this little housing. There we have it. We'll take the toothbrush, just clean it up a little bit. This one's a little bit dirty. All right, now we can take our brush, just make sure it fits on there still. Turn it, good to go. And before we reassemble this, Let's go ahead and talk about the other issue on the other robot. It's this little button right here that the bin presses. 
Now this could be caused from a couple different things. It could be caused from this button going bad or wearing out. So you just pull this out very gently and replace it. Or it could just be the bin's bad, which I believe since that bin is broken, that's gonna be the issue. So super simple fix on that one. So let me go ahead and blow this out. Watch your ears. Let's go ahead and start the reassembly process. Which is super, super simple. If you paid attention, you now know how to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and set this motor back in there. We want to make sure we line it up, slide her in. Take our two Phillips head screws. Sure y'all can see what I'm doing. Sorry for the camera shake. Now I'll tell you why we're replacing this first. Instead of the suction motor. We took the suction motor out first, but we could put it back first. But I've learned doing this putting this in first is a lot easier now take your wires slide them over to the side this part we're actually going to change from how it was originally designed and it makes a lot more sense so we're going to go ahead and replace the suction motor keep the wires out the way watch what you're doing slide it down nice and gentle there we have it. These wires used to go under. Now they're gonna go over. That way, if we ever have to replace this again, it's a lot easier to get that part out with taking the suction motor, without having to take the suction motor out. Go ahead and replace the three silver Phillips head with washer screws. Drop it a couple times like I did. This next part, this is a tricky part of putting the motherboard back in and just getting all the wires where they need to be. But not too bad as long as you have patience take your time all right so here comes the fun part it's putting all of these wires back on the motherboard some people are gonna freak out about it all right so pretty much what you do is you literally just pull all the wires to the back side just like this and then you're just gonna take the motherboard Slide her back on. And double check you got all your wires. Which we do. I'll go ahead and zoom in for y'all. Sorry about the shake. Okay, now we just start replacing wires. This one's gonna come over. Oops, where's this one here? Oh, this one goes over here. Now remember, some of these wires are going to be extremely tight, so take your time so you don't break any of the pins. Firmly push them down. Spinner motors. And we'll tuck all the wires into their, their little holders here in a little bit. Uh-oh. I think I forgot a wire. I think we didn't screw it down yet. Yep, sure it did. Lost the uh, wheel wire. Wheel wire is going to go down. Feet back around. I 
clip side goes in the wheel housing hole. Try to get this on camera for y'all. Push that in, pull it down, pull it through. Start running wires through all these little alleyways or looms or whatever you want to call them. Wire placement will be key whenever you put the top back on, so we'll definitely pay attention to that. We're gonna pull this wire through. Just to give us more room to put this piece back on. This piece is gonna come over here. It's the one with the, the switch and everything. It just slides back on. Run our wires through all these little looms and stuff. We're not screwing the motherboard down just yet. Gives us a little bit more maneuverability. Plugged all these million connectors in. Like I said, patience is key. Just like before, spinner motor wheel. This is oops, did that wrong. What was I thinking? This one's just really tight, this wheel and wire, so you just gotta feed it through and keep it in. Alright, pushing wires into little holders. It's not, it doesn't have to be a perfect job, I'll tell you that now. As long as you can get it back together and hold together, you will be a-okay. Because if you remember taking it apart, you remember not everything was in the same way. Well, I'm sweating. It's a hot day here in Florida. So to save y'all some headache, watching me do all these wires and all these little spots, go ahead and just do it for the most part. Now we'll start adding screws back. All five of these screws go back. You could technically leave a couple of these out, but if you don't do it, do it right, right?
these under this little black tab. This one's kind of the major hold down for all the wires. So trying to get as many of those in as you can. Go ahead and blow this top piece off. Now reassemble. You're going to check, make sure none of these wires are going to get hit by anything when they come down. So like this one, we're going to make sure it's over there. This is going to be over here. And we're just going to slowly lower this down. That's to not pinch anything. There's a flathead to push any wires that are potentially going to get pinched. There we have that. That is excellent. Now to add some screws. There's already one in there. that one's been broken we'll just have to glue that on the side no big deal it's actually pretty common now we're gonna start adding wheels back Oops. flip it around Cody all right add one wheel really tight. Okay, so I completely messed that up. I completely put the wrong wheel on the wrong side. I mean, the wrong wheel wire on the wrong side. So you'll apologize for that. Let me fix my error really quick. So, this wheel wire goes from here to here. Is shorter. This one is longer, so it goes from here. Alright, now that we have the correct wires in the correct place, now we can reassemble it. Alright, let's go ahead and put the body back on it. Now these wires will fit correct. We can go ahead and slap the wheels in. Go ahead and tighten the wheels down.
Go ahead and put the dust bin back in. Put a roller back on. Roller cover. Now we're going to take the front bumper. Be very careful when we put this back on. Set it down while it's in place. Put the brushes back back in if they fall out. Flip it over. Flip it in. While we're doing this, we'll go ahead and pop the front wheel back on. Put our battery in, slide it down, clip it on, battery cover, Phillips head screw, turn it on, there we go, it's off to the races, no more grinding noise, that's how to repair it guys. So. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps y'all out. I know it's a lot of uh, little things in this robot, and I know it's a very long video, but that's a complete disassembly, reassembly, and repair of this robot.